So the first thing we have to do is transfer our design onto our fabric. So we're going to stretch our fabric into the hoop. This is the no slip hoop. That is the best for punching because it keeps the fabric really stretched the whole time. Regular embroidery hoop will not do that for you. So I highly recommend this guy. And what I do is I put the fabric in and then just work my way around until it is really tight. I go around and then tighten a little bit and then go around some more to see if anything else <clears throat> excuse me, needs tightening. This is actually pretty good. So I just want to make sure that this is all snapped in where it's supposed to be and we tighten. So uh, we're going to be working from both sides of the hoop. Our sculpting part will be on this side, which means we will have to punch from the back, which is how punching is usually done. So all we do is we're going to transfer, but we're only going to transfer the bird because the flowers will be embroidered. So the flowers will actually be transferred from the front. Okay, we can set that aside and grab our punch needle for the wordy. So for sculpting, you want to have a really high pile on the other side. So I'm going to go to the very last setting so I have my longest tip set. And I'm just going to thread the needle, just like so. And then you can work with whatever needle you have, just make sure it's on the longest setting. We're going to start with the wing. And we're going to sculpt it first, and then we're going to go to the rest of the bird. So when you're punching for sculpting, you want to punch really close together so you have a really dense area on the other side. So about every second hole. If you're using a thicker yarn, you can adjust based on that. You will not need to punch so closely together if you have a um, bulky size yarn, for example. turn your work however it's most comfortable for you to punch I have a tendency to rotate my um, hoop so that I am mainly going from right to left but some people prefer to go you know from the bottom up or from top down whatever feels comfortable just make sure that your opening of the needle is always in the direction where you're punching and then if you need to switch it, you just turn your needle while it's inside and then punch like so. So when you're punching, the basics are you wanna go all the way down, push your needle all the way down. And when you come up, for air <laughs> you don't want to lift your needle too much because then you'll have a loop here so if that happens you'll just pull your needle and then reset so it's the tip of the needle should be always flush with the fabric as you're punching and you're moving forward and you're basically sliding the tip of the needle on the fabric so now we have this fluff here um, what I usually like to do when I have a shape to fill out, I do an outline and then um, I continue in a circular motion or pattern inwards. And I do that until it's all filled in. In the smaller areas, 
make sure you don't over punch it's really easy to put way too many stitches and you know if you're just doing punch needle it'll come out really warped if you're punching for sculpting you might be able to get away with that because we're going to be cutting everything on the other side so I'm just gonna continue like this until the whole wing is filled in. I also have my yarn here and I'm pulling from the center um, so that way the whole skein is not dancing all over the table and I can just pull from the center. It's easiest to do it that way. All right, so I'm just gonna finish the wing and I'm gonna meet you um, when I'm done. All right, so now that we're done, we're gonna flip our work over Take our amazing scissors. These are Kai scissors, my best, um, I think the best scissors for sculpting, honestly. Okay, so we have this blob right now uh, and we're going to sculpt it. So if you're not sure what the shape is like, you can sort of squish the yarn a little bit to see where we are. You can flip it over to see, I see this is where the fl flatter side of the wing is and this is the more of a wiggly side here so what I like to do is take my scissors and just do uh, a slightly angled cut at first just to get those uh, loops that are at the on the edge Move this out of the way and you don't have to worry right now about getting the squiggly squiggly side perfect we're gonna get that to that later I also like to have a small vacuum with me when I sculpt as well as a face mask because I don't like to breathe all this acrylic in. Um, so this is the first round of cut. This is what it'll look like. It'll have sort of like just scruffy, um, you know, loops around. So I'm going to make another cut and I'm just going to go closer to the bases and I'm just gonna go perpendicular to the shape. You don't wanna go too close because then you might um, snip the fabric, which is the worst case scenario, or you might snip the bases of the loop in which case you can always re-punch and re-sculpt again so you don't have to worry about that okay this is okay for the first we can clean that up later now we're going to we have flatter sides here so now we're going to move up a little bit and angle our scissors this way and we're only trimming the ends of the loops you don't want to go too deep because you're going to lose the shape so we're just going on the surface. You can use the edge of the scissors to sort of get the mess off the, um, the hoop. So now we're getting a little bit more of that dome shape here. Um, and so we're just going to continue moving the scissors upwards and angling them until we're flat on the top. So we were just about here, so we can actually go pretty flat right now. And first do a cut so that your surface is somewhat even. Don't worry about loops that are staying uncut because you will always have those. Um, and how we're going to fix that, you can grab your scissors and just pick on those loops, cut through them, and then trim them to the height of the rest of the loops around them. If you wanted to um, leave this looking a little bit variegated so it's not just all trimmed you can actually leave some loops as they are and that way you will have some sort of a, a color variation because as you're noticing the yarn as we're cutting and it's getting darker but if you want a little bit of fluff like feathers wouldn't all be the same color right so you can leave some of the loops it's actually pretty fun 
Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go grab my um, vacuum and I'm going to vacuum this. Okay, after you vacuum, you're going to notice some of the strays that the vacuum pulled out, which is actually super helpful. So now I'm going to go around the shape and perfect it. So here, this is the wiggly part. No, this is the straight part. This is the wiggly part. Okay, so I'm going to go straight around here and closer. And you can see how the shape is much more defined now. Okay, so this is where the wiggles come in you can move the loops around just to see where you need to cut a little bit more sometimes i like to go like this right in between the wiggle and it'll create that sort of a um wavy effect I always like to push the loops and pile in the direction that I'm trying to cut so I can see what's still kind of hanging over that section because if you push it this way yes this is great but the second someone touches it it's going to become misshapen so I'm going to give this a trim here and now sort of go around to make it more wiggly so here's another one one and two, careful with the tip of your scissors so you don't cut your fabric. This is pretty good. I'm going to leave this as is and I'm going to punch the rest of the body to see how the yarn around the, um, the wing will react with this. It'll probably push some of the pile up higher so we can adjust later on. Okay, so I have my punch needle in the same setting and I'm just going to grab the darker yarn and I'm going to punch the whole body in the same way so we're punching about every second hole going all the way down you don't have to worry about the beak the eye or the legs we're gonna do those from the front actually so we can disregard as we punch If at any time you feel like you've punched incorrectly or you know you pulled out too much or whatever you can always pull out your loop and then adjust your yarn again until it is not loopy here and then continue punching So now we're done with the body. Snip the last stitch. And this is what we have. Here's our birdie. So we're going to do the same thing that we did with the wing. We're going to do a cut around first. 
you can push on your fabric from the bottom a little bit to raise your loops just don't do it too much because you might snip too much Okay. Now around here, I'm just going to snip a little bit. I don't want too much of a dent there, so to speak. Just with the tips. Okay. And now I'm going to continue angling the scissors as I'm going upwards. I think it's time for some vacuum. You don't have to worry, your loops will not come out when you're vacuuming. It's okay. So now I'm gonna push all these to the outer side so I can do another cut. And I'm gonna do shape cut again. And I'm going to go in a different direction here so I can access this little corner. Okay, now I'm going to go around again. And as I'm moving up, I'm going to push on this a little bit to expose the tips of the loops. And again, if you want to leave it looking, um, you know, more textured, you can leave some loops uncut again. before I worry about the whole shape. Okay, now I see there's some loops here in the wing that are a bit too long. Pull them on and snip. Okay, I'm gonna go around by the wing and angling a little bit, not a whole lot. Just so I'm getting the ends of the body color. So you can see how it's um, much better defined now. And I have a couple there that I can sew just with the tips of my scissors. Really doing just like a surface cutting there. Okay. Now I'm going to continue around a little bit just to clean up these bad boys that are sticking out. It helps to go in opposite direction of cutting because you're exposing loops that have been pushed this way with the scissors. See? If you go this way, they're gonna come out. So you can continue cleaning up. Biggest issue will be knowing when to stop.
for the body I'm actually looking for most of the loops but you don't have to So I think the shape looks pretty good. Can be a little scruffy because, you know, it's a bird. So do whatever you want. You're the artist. So this is what it's going to be like. This is the body. We're going to have the legs here. I'm going to continue on the wing now. There's going to be nothing around here in terms of yarn. So I really need to clean this up to whatever shape I want it to have. And I don't know if I explained this in the beginning, but the reason we're angling the scissors is because we're going for that dome-shaped uh, body and wing, and just all of the shapes um, are like that, unless you, you know, you want a different shape. So here, I'm also going to go a little bit down towards the tip, so that I have a dome going this way. and more of that cut here so that we can tell that we have that wiggly thing going here on the wing. Okay, a little bit more surface cut. Like I said, really hard to know when to stop. It's easier to cut less at a time and you know do more cuts than cut too much at once and then regret it. Okay I think I think because <laughs> I won't know until I see the whole thing but um, I think this is good so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out the flowers in the sun and we're going to transfer them onto here um, and then go from there. Okay, I've decided I'm going to do the high first, so I'm going to go one setting down and I have this lovely indigo color here. And I'm going to thread through. You can use black, but you know. I mean, we now have some fun, right? All right, so we're literally just making one loop here, which um, is going to be fun. So we can approximately right there and just pull this and just do one loop. Hold it on the other side, snip here, leave a little yarn hanging so it doesn't come through, and then I'm going to snip this here, and then what you can do to adjust the eye, you can uh, grab this and just pull on it a little bit until you like how um, deep it is in there. What you can also do is you can lightly trim around the eye so the area is a little bit lower and the eye sort of stands out. Just don't cut into the eye. I mean, if you do, you can always repunch. Not a big deal. So now we can transfer our sock and put this underneath here and just approximately. Don't make this too long because um, you're going to have to go over it with the needle so it's hidden 
Um, these are just approximate so you know which direction we're gonna go in and I'll tell you how to do it later. But just FYI. And I just realized I put the sun in the in the wrong side. It was supposed to be here. That's okay. So now the flowers are also going to be here. Okay, so embroidery now. We don't have to have super long loops set because the loops will be on the other side and we won't see them. So you can go down to about this. You don't want to go also super low because your loops will not stay in and um, it will come out, especially this only has like a couple, um, a couple of stitches. So let's see where the beak is approximately. You can probably tell the Sharpie on the other side already. So we're just going to mark it right there. And I'm going to go in and pull the end to the other side. And then I'm going to go left. Now this is going to be fun. And then I'm going to go right. And then I'm going to go into the center. So I made like a little triangle. We're gonna snip here. And we have a beak. Now legs. Where are my legs? There are my legs. One, two. So I'm gonna keep this. And actually what I'm gonna do a regular punch needle because if we did just one stitch it'll be kind of you know too loose so I'm gonna do a regular punch needle for one stick here and the same thing here all right let's work on these flowers down here next so what I'm going to do, I threaded my needle with the um, bright or yellow color, and I'm just gonna go and I'm just gonna punch the centers. And your setting doesn't have to be super long for this. Mine is a bit longer than I. Shouldn't have it. I'm gonna go one down. Just so we don't waste yarn, because really all you're doing is wasting yarn because it's on the other side and you won't be able to see it, right? So Alright, now that we're done with the centers, we can do the petals. So the petals we're gonna do um <clears throat> with again embroidery. You can do them as loops if you want to. That would be fun. So I'm just gonna go and punch in the center. And pull the end to the other side um, and then we adjust a little bit and so now we're just gonna do straight stitches basically so we're gonna go up and then I like to turn my needle and then go back to the center and sort of follow each petal shape like so now we're gonna go to the next one you just want to make sure you overlap the the marker so it's not visible. Yeah, I missed it here, so I'm gonna pull it out. And I'm gonna redo it. You can rearrange your fabric and then go back and forth, and just keep following the shape. Look how cute this is. And on the other side, all you have are these random loops, right? At the end and at the beginning. So you won't have super defined petals if you're doing this technique. If you want to have super defined petals, then you'll either need to sculpt them or punch them. 
or you can also do like a sh like a, a regular embroidery around to make them more defined but I like this how the flower is sort of you know imperfect but so cute I love how textured it gets fluffy and when you're punching too much in one spot it can get a little too much <laughs> so sometimes you can punch sort of close to it but not quite Okay, so we're down here. I'm going to pull a bit of the yarn out from the needle so we have a longer tail. Look at this. Isn't that cute? It's adorable. Okay, here's the green. And I'm going to continue the same in the same fashion. I'm keeping the embroidery the same, but the colors will be different. Okay, the flowers are done, and now we're going to move on to the sun. Oh, hey, that rhymed. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make this a little bit stronger because I want to <clears throat> punch this from the other side. And in order for me to do that, I need to see where that outline is. So I'm just gonna set my needle to uh, one of the shorter settings. I'm gonna have four uh, of the ridges sticking out. I don't know what the best way is to explain this. And I'm just going to punch. When you have a shorter setting on, you really have to make shorter stitches because your loops on the other side will not be super long. So just wanna make sure that you're, you don't have any gaps there. So the shorter the tip of the needle, the shorter your stitches. So these should be too long, right? Like every four holes, every other hole at the most. Other, other hole, not holes. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go and punch this in a circular motion, just like I did the bird. So, and then I'll come back to you. Now I have a little space here, but I'm going to check the other side. I don't need to punch that. It'll be overdone if I do. So I'm just going to snip my stitch here. Okay, that's cute. I like that. We're going to have a variation of things on this. So now we're going to do the rays. And I was debating how, what the best way to do this would be so that I would actually like it and it would be easier to punch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sort of an outline around the sun and then go and make each ray. I'm gonna punch to the base of the ray. Then I'm gonna go and punch the ray 
make sure your yarn is really flowing easily for this and then I'm gonna turn my needle while it's inside and turn back okay. then I'm gonna make a small stitch so the Sun will have sort of a knot one and I'm not punching into the same hole for every Sun ray or a couple of Sun rays then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna make a stitch to the next ray and these the length of these you know you can do whatever you want pretty much I made them shorter I didn't want to go too close to the bird but if you want to go longer here just make sure your loops won't come out when you do that okay and then make a stitch to the next one I can go longer on this bit and back stitch to the next one and just continue I'm going to do two here because it was a little further apart and you can you know you don't have to follow this exactly you can do one in between if you want I'm gonna make this one a little longer and come back to see how with how much I can get away with right and then about here and back couple here and then here and my cat is here and finished with one more stitch there and I'm gonna pull out a little bit more yarn okay so now I'm going to show you how to transfer this finished piece into a hoop and how to display it so we're just going to take this out leave this for the next project okay so here's my uh, nine inch hoop I grabbed the wrong size before and align to make sure that it is somewhat and this doesn't have to be stretched, you know, like when you're punching. It just needs to fit within the hoop. And it needs to look sort of, you know, stretched, but it doesn't have to be stretched to the max. As long as it's in. Okay. So now what we're going to do... We need a tapestry needle and just like a, a random piece of yarn. This is about half a yard. And we're gonna finish the back of this. So I'm gonna cut all these corners. So they're, so we're gonna have about two inches, inch and a half around the hoop. It doesn't have to be perfect. Don't want to have too much fabric then because it's going to be sticking out. So I'm gonna grab my needle, and it doesn't matter where you start, but we'll leave and end here. There's fiber everywhere, and we're just going to what is this? No, oh, this is another end. And we're just going to go around with these and it actually helps to do more of a neutral color Let's see if it's, I don't think it's gonna be visible from the other side but it might so I'm actually going to swap the color sometimes I get so much you know into the zone that I don't really think about the outcome I just really I'm going with the flow because it's fun and I'm doing it so okay grab a neutral color you can do a white or a cream we've used white here so or I have if you've used white then um, you can use that this is the easier way to do it Andy all right so just in and out, in and out. 
and you don't have to be you know it doesn't have to be even it doesn't have to be uh, exactly the same distance from the hook everywhere it's fine just make sure you don't go too close to the edge because the fabric will um, come apart I keep forgetting the word for that what is it called I don't know but you know what I mean okay so just continue around if it starts pulling like this that's fine that's what we're gonna do anyway so uh, just keep going until you meet other end there we are pretty close okay and then you're gonna take off your needle and what you're gonna do is you're going to tie these two and then pull 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 it pulls your fabric together I like to tie a bow if I decide to you know change something or whatnot but look how cute you can hang this on your wall you can cut off uh, more of the fabric if you like you can put felt in here and sort of um, you know secure it that way if you want you can cut a piece of cardboard in a circle in that size and push it in so it holds everything in um, you can use one of these fancy uh, hoops I don't have the right size for this but this is a really cute way to display it and yeah we're done